As you guys know, if you've been following along in this channel, we've done a lot this year. We've had a great time, made a lot of good videos for you guys. Um, just want to let you know, like if you're thinking about having kids or if you've had kids, you know what I mean. It is super stressful. Now you're thinking about another life on top of yours and it's like, <sighs> anxiety, let me tell you. It's a Saturday. I really just need to relax. So today is going to be a practice day. Uh, just kind of like a day of street photography in town with the wife and kid. And, oh, but I did have one planned shot. And I'm going to show you guys what I'm taking for that shot. It's going to be run and gun. We're going to have Levi's, so I don't want to carry a backpack. I just want something simple to go with. I'm not going to be putting my camera, obviously, in the camera bag. Do you want that stuff? Yeah, you do. Here, you can play with this. Play with that. We got here oh, the Sigma lens but I'm bringing this to take pictures of because I'm going to be doing my first year review with this soon. I've had it for a year, I love this lens. There is some things that are negative about it though. So I'll let you guys know if you're interested in that video, stay tuned. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell so you get notified when things like that come out. Um, and then this is the Nifty 50 that I got from the brother-in-law. Um, obviously, it's got the converter on it, and it's a lot bigger with the converter on. Still super small, probably nice for street photography, and today we're just gonna be going out into town to uh, take photos, so you're gonna slip, you're gonna slide out. <laughs> are you doing the splits? Ah! So we're out down at the falls in Bracebridge, Starting our adventure here. We just passed by the falls and there's the spot where I've been waiting for the longest time, every time I go by with a camera, for someone to be there, just to make that shot interesting. We drove by, people are there now. I doubt they'll be there when we pass. You need help with anything, babe? No, thank you. Okay. I guess I'll get our little nugget out of the car. Hey, look at you all bundled up now, aren't you cute? <laughs> so if you guys notice a, a difference in the video, that's because I'm vlogging on the GoPro now because we've got the 50 millimeter on this APS-C. So if you don't know, the crop factor is 1.5, meaning that's actually closer to a 75 millimeter, not suitable for vlogging. Um, but yeah. It should make for some good pictures, and hopefully those people are still at the waterfall. So I was right, we passed by the falls, and those people were gone. Um, took a few test shots anyways. It wasn't the greatest focal length a little too zoomed in for that environment I've also tried that shot with the 16 millimeter um, And that one's too wide so Soon I will be hopefully getting the Sigma 30 millimeter for the APS-C and I'm hoping that that one will be closer to what we see with the human eye and it'll be the perfect focal length for that shot. And maybe there will be people there when we pass by. Onward and on. We have come to the park in town here. Um, and I was hoping to have a little more light shining off the ground, but it's not gonna happen. Anyways, I'm gonna try and get a picture of that Sigma lens. Um, for the thumbnail of my review. You think you can give me a hand with that? Probably. So we've got this sun here. It's kind of just breaking through that side and kind of come along the ground. So we're gonna set up Lisa right here with the lens and I'm gonna try and go depth of field all on the lens. And we're gonna do a little bit of a floating shot. So hopefully that works. Hopefully I have enough light for that. Focus, I'm gonna get you to just do this. 
You don't have to be hard with it, just a little pop. <laughs> been a lot of super interesting stuff happening tonight for like good street photos um, I have tried to take a couple of shots and uh, <laughs> to be honest with you this is an amazing lens super crisp clear it's actually not a bad focal length I probably wouldn't want to go so narrow um, on a regular basis but it, you don't have to get too close to the subject which is good so it's not like creepy or anything did you have fun It is cold out. Um, that whole still action, freezing the lens and the air thing, um, I'm sure you guys have seen that before. First time I've ever done it. The thing that I think I struggled most with is placing the model, Lisa. Uh, it's, it's hard kind of figuring out where you want the hand in, in uh, accordance to her face or her body. My settings were uh, 260 shutter speed, um, I played around with the f-stop uh, from f2 to 1.8 and uh, we're on the way back to the car so I'm gonna try and snap a few more pictures. <laughs> Yanni. <laughs> <laughs> good thing about coming out with uh, your wife and your kid when you go through town and there is no subject because like literally this town is empty you got something to shoot <laughs> but anyways we're passing by that waterfall now maybe there's gonna be a subject there this time No. All right, so we had a good time. Even though it wasn't the best night for street photography, time to head back, add some pictures, let's go. All right, folks, three weeks later and I am here with edited photos and we're ready to talk about them. Computer problems, technology, I'm telling you, I never catch a break. Let's dive right into these photos. We're gonna talk about what I like the best about them, what I don't like, that much about them and how we can improve if I were to do it all over again and that way we can talk about the best settings to get the best results let's jump right into our photos here with the floating lens we're gonna dive right back to the beginning here this is a picture of Lisa holding the lens this is the test shot that I took while I was pulling focus so I pulled focus on the lens um, in her hand uh, and just a tip for you guys if you were doing this I would suggest manually focusing because if you use autofocus if you rely on that with a moving subject it will throw out of focus use manual focus and have your subject stand as still as possible as well as you because when you are using a deep or a shallow depth of field um, it's really easy to lose that focus if you move too much as you can see what whatever is in focus um, there's lots of texture to her glove everything is nice and sharp um, thank you Michael for letting me borrow that lens it worked great for the two shoots that I did um, anyways so let's move on from here here's the first floating shot here that I chose out of the several um, I when I do a shoot like this also put it in um, burst mode high speed so that way you just takes a ton of shots and you can pick the perfect ones uh, one of the things I did not tell Lisa or my model that I was working with is to try and look at 
the object that she is tossing um, or focus on it and the thing is because that really adds to the effect as you can see in this picture it worked out really well she was looking at it this is the whole point of that floating is she's got to try and make it look like she is making it float with her mind so having your model looking at the object is important that's another tip for you guys but anyways as you can see this shot looks great at 72 dots per inch on your phone on Instagram it looks absolutely amazing as I was editing and you move further in you can see that there is some motion blur in the print on this lens and around the edges now so if you were gonna do this knowing that whoever viewing these pictures would be looking at a larger format like a big screen TV a larger print you would notice right away that uh, there is some blur and you don't want that. If I were to redo this, I would try and use at least one over 500 or higher. Now the thing is, is I used one over 260. Main reason is because I was trying to get my exposure at the right spot on the histogram. I usually like to expose everything to the right side as far as possible without overexposing or blowing out my highlights. A one over 260 is not fast enough um, if you want super high quality. Um, what I could have done to make this better would have been to shoot at a brighter time of day um, or done the Brandon Wolfel style and underexposed my photos keeping my ISO really low and just blasting those um, highlights and just getting rid of all of the shadows. Um, that would have been my other option. Now if you look at that f-stop we used 1.8 or 2.0 I think I bounced back between those a couple of times. Um, I did move closer and further away to my subject and kind of changed my angle a couple times um, pulling focus in between each time. I think that that depth of field worked out great just because I'm trying to put emphasis on the object. I didn't want her face to be in focus. Um, that is more of a taste uh, scenario. So if you guys wanted her, her face or your model's face more in focus, then you would use obviously a higher f-stop. Just keep that in mind as well. Um, and then obviously, yeah, when you were working with something like this, you want a really low ISO to begin with, even if you're going to boost it a little bit because um, high grain in bokeh just does not look very nice at all. But other than that, I think this shoot turned out really well. Anyways, I had a lot of fun with this. I probably will do this again. I hope you guys like these photos um, as well. It was nice to go out with the wife and son. I hope you like this one. This is one of my favorite photos um, of the beginning of winter so far. I uh, got a little close up of the little guy here. If you guys do like the photos that I take and you want to keep following along, make sure to throw a thumbs up. Go down into the description below and check out my Instagram page, Tony Stepanek. 31. All right. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.